How did I make over a million pounds this week? Sorry, did I say pounds? I meant Hassanat. If you get the Quran, you have one letter Alif being 10 Hassanat is now 100 because in Ramadan, it's multiplied by 10 at least. Download the Quran app and start your Ramadan challenge today. Assalamu alaikum. كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My brothers and sisters, at times we see people committing sin and we see evil people and we wonder why is it that the Almighty is not punishing them? Why does He allow them to get away with whatever they're doing? Well, the reality is Allah doesn't allow them to get away. He just gives them a chance. He gives them a time to think about what they're doing and to stop it on their own. So if you are doing something wrong, don't think that just because everything in your life is moving smooth, that Allah is happy with you. Perhaps he is giving you a time to turn to him. He's giving you an opportunity to turn to him before the punishment strikes. And this is why it's very important for us to reconnect with revelation, to see what the Almighty is saying. So Allah Almighty clearly says, If Allah had to punish the people for the wrong and the oppression that they've in, engaged in, there would be nothing left on earth. Nothing that moves would survive. He would have destroyed everything because the amount of sin and the amount of oppression and wrong that has happened, if people were to be punished because of the transgression they've engaged in and they were never forgiven or never given a chance, if that was the case, everything would have been destroyed. Allah says, وَلَكِنْ يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Subhanallah, this is verse number 61 of Surah An-Nahl, where Allah says, but he delays them up to a prescribed time, a fixed time. So Allah delays you and I and everyone else up to a fixed time. And Allah Almighty has decided that he will punish people when he wants. Subhanallah. And this is why if you look at the prophets and what's mentioned in the Quran about them, they prayed for the guidance of their people because their mission was to convey the message of guidance. Just like the Quran is a message for you and I and all mankind and jinn kind, the messengers who came with the messages were instructed to give that to the people and to guide them. And when they saw that these people are reacting in a negative way, there came a time when they actually said, Oh Allah, guide our people. If you haven't written guidance for them, like the prophet Noah, may peace be upon him, he says, Oh Allah, if you haven't written guidance for these, then destroy them or protect us from them in whatever way you feel fit. And then the punishment came at the time of the prophet Noah, may peace be upon him, in the form of floods, in the form of water. Water is a gift of the Almighty. Too little of it may be a punishment and too much of it may also be a punishment, which leaves us with this, the fact that water in the right amount, at the right time, in the right place, is a gift of Allah. And that's why the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to pray not just for rain, but for beneficial rain in the right place, in the right quantity. May Allah Almighty grant us an understanding. When we reconnect with revelation, we humble ourselves. We realize the greatness of the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything besides man. If all of that is so great, man shouldn't think that he is somehow above the law of Allah Almighty. Just because Allah created him in the best posture, Allah created him as the most noble of creatures of Allah Almighty. Generally, Ashraful Makhluqat, that's what we're known as. We're known as 
the most noble of all the other creatures. We have brains, we have eyes, we have sense, we have ability that others or other creatures do not have, be they plants or fish or birds or whatever else it may be, animals. Allah has granted us an understanding unlike the other creatures. So all of this should humble us. But without revelation and guidance, we wouldn't be able to realize this. And that's why this is the month of Ramadan. And in this month of Ramadan, it is a month where we should be reconnecting with the Quran. Recitation, as well as learning the meanings of, taking lessons from, changing our lives because of the words and verses of the Quran. My brothers, my sisters, Allah Almighty says, when the prescribed time comes for any one of you, Allah says, he will not be able to delay it by a moment, nor will he bring it forward. Meaning, the person will not be brought forward, nor delayed. The person will not be able to delay it, nor bring it forward. And Allah Almighty will not do that, because he has set a time. When Allah's time comes, that's it. So, there are two times that we speak about here. The first is a time for the punishment to overtake a person. When that time comes, anyone who is going to be punished is doomed. There's nothing that they would ever be able to do that would divert the punishment from them to something else. But if that time has not come, nobody would ever be able to bring it forward. That's what Allah is saying. So number one is the punishment. We are taught to turn back before punishment overtakes us. And when is the punishment coming to me or to you? I don't know. So what's my best bet? The best thing to do is turn now and turn every day. Seek the forgiveness of Allah every day. Allah is most loving. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sought the forgiveness of Allah so many times a day. Why? In order to teach us that we need to do the same. So if any one of us would like to learn a lesson from Revelation, it is that we should emulate the teachings and the method and style of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. So we would achieve the forgiveness of Allah on a daily basis and therefore the punishment would not come to us. But there is another fixed time that will definitely come to us. What is that? The point of death of every one of us. Death is a gift for believers. A person who believes in Allah Almighty, do you know that they would look at death from a totally different angle? They would say, everyone has to die anyway and we have to return to the Almighty. We were with him before we came onto the earth anyway. And now that I'm going back to him, I've done a lot of good deeds. I've tried to be a good person. I've worshipped him alone. I've fulfilled my obligations. I've stayed away from prohibition. I've tried to assist all other human beings. I've tried to be kind to a lot of others. But at the same time, the gift that I have is I know I'm going to a good place. I know that the Almighty, the Lord I'm going to, is a merciful Lord filled with kindness, compassion, he is the most forgiving, the most beneficent. He has beautiful names and qualities. Yes, he has warned us and I have taken heed and I've tried. And yes, there is a concern, but I still have greater hope than anything else in the mercy of Allah. Where would we learn this from? Revelation. If you're not connected to revelation in the correct way, you either have too much of fear or too much of hope. But if you're connected to revelation in the correct way, you will have a balance of hope and fear. Where the scale of hope tips the scale of fear to a degree that it keeps you going and worshipping Allah and looking forward to the hereafter, knowing that as much as my deeds may not be of a level that is equivalent to that of the prophets and that of the saints and that of the pious and so on, but... At least I've tried and I'm going to a Lord who's prepared to accept me because I tried my best to develop the best relationship with him. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he tells us verse number 78 of Surah Al-Nahl where Allah says, 
والله اخرجكم من بطون امهاتكم لا تعلمون شيئا when allah created you when he removed you when he took you out of the bellies of your mothers the wombs of your mothers so when allah took you out of the wombs of your mothers you knew nothing you knew nothing you couldn't speak and he says immediately after that waja'ala lakum as-sam'a wal absara wal af'idata la'allakum tashkurun he created for you your hearing and your sight and your hearts in order that you are thankful to him so he wants you to know you you couldn't speak and you didn't know anything you had no knowledge when you were born he wants you to know all of these faculties were created in order for you, for them to be used in a way that you recognize the almighty and in a way that you turn to him and reconnect with him may allah grant that to us اقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد كتاب انزلناه اليك مبارك ليدبروا اياته وليتذكر thank you so much for listening to the short message i pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته